With the release of Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 1 Episode 3, we were given a dark look into the earliest days of the Empire and how the Republic's Grand Army began to transition to natural-born troopers. As part of this transition, Imperial leadership implemented a top secret operation known as Project War Mantle, which also happens to be one of the top secret projects which was archived at the Imperial Vault on Scarif and discovered by Jyn Erso while she searched for the Death Star plans. So what exactly was Operation War Mantle? Well, the Bad Batch has finally given us an explanation, so let's break it down. Before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed for more awesome Star Wars lore content. During the heated Battle of Scarif, Rebel operatives Cassie and Andor and Jyn Erso managed to break their way into the highly secured and extremely well protected Citadel Tower at the Empire's security complex on Scarif, which was known by the Rebel Alliance to hold some of the Empire's most destructive, deadly, and sickening plans for the future of the galaxy. Jin and Cassian's main goal was to retrieve the Death Star plans and transmit them to the Rebel fleet above Scarif, but while searching for them, she came across Imperial codenames for many other top secret Imperial projects. These were Stardust, which of course contained the Death Star plans, Stellar Sphere, Mark Omega, Pax Aurora, Cluster Prism, Black Saber, and finally, War Mantle. Now, quite a few of these are pretty suspiciously named with all of the new context we have in the time after Rogue One came out, with Mark Omega possibly being related to Palpatine's four sensitive cloning plans and attempting to capture Omega, Project Black Saber probably being a reference to the Dark Saber and may contain some information about how Moff Gideon acquired it during the Great Mandalorian Purge, and now War Mantle, which we have a ton more info on. When Rogue One initially came out, I think the writers wanted to have all of these plans have some relation to the Death Star construction, as all of the names are related to large spherical objects, super lasers, and components of the Death Star. The Darksaber in Legends was actually a super laser, Cluster Prism sounds like it could have something to do with the cluster of lasers that we see when the Death Star fires, Stellar Sphere, <laughs> I don't have to explain how that one relates to the Death Star, and War Mantle probably originally referred to the interior functions of the Death Star. But either way, it's very clear now that they are no longer honouring these original meanings since they were never enshrined into canon and are now doing something much more interesting connecting it to the other major events around the galaxy. It's now clear that Project War Mantle is the Imperial project which begins the replacement of the clone troopers with stormtroopers and the mass conscription of enlisted natural born soldiers into the Imperial army. We now know that Project War Mantle is being spearheaded by Vice Admiral Rampart, who is an up-and-coming Imperial officer, hoping to make his name in the ranks of the Empire, and of course to impress Tarkin while he's at it. Leading the War Mantle effort, Rampart hopes to transition the vast clone army of the Republic into a nearly completely enlisted and natural army of stormtroopers that would better suit the Empire's desire for loyalty and dominance. And this program is also pretty likely the precursor to the Imperial Death Trooper program, but I'll get into that in a bit because there are quite a few massive connections which tell us that War Mantle is on a trajectory to the Death Trooper program. Rampart firmly believes that in order to maintain a firm grip on the galaxy and to prevent rebel uprisings popping up, the Empire needs a strong, ruthless and loyal military from the top down. And unfortunately for the clone troopers of the Republic, this squarely took them out of the competition because Rampart believed that being bred in the tubes of Kamino could not produce anywhere near the same loyalty that a soldier who willingly enlisted ever could. On top of the issues with extreme cost, acts of disobedience and unwillingness to follow orders were quickly stacking up in the clone army as Tarkin got a first hand view of with Clone Force 99. Because of this, Vice Admiral Rampart scoured the galaxy for the Empire's first group of elite fighters who would serve in Elite Squad 1. Being an admiral in the opening days of the Empire, Rampart obviously would have had plenty of experience serving the Republic Navy as a non-clone officer during the war, and would have vast experience serving alongside the clones of Jango Fett. Because of his past serving alongside these clone troopers, he believed that they were very skilled and effective combatants, but would be better off serving in a training role for the new Imperial Army, because they had skills which could be taught, but not the loyalty that the new Empire demanded. After arriving on Kamino and greeting Tarkin, Rampart introduces the Elite Squad for the first time, hoping to prove to Tarkin that they will be the way forward for the Empire. Along with this and the first episode, it's clear that this is the first time that the Kaminoans are facing the serious possibility of losing their cloning contract with the Republic, which would not only cost them ridiculous amounts of wealth, but also crucial influence with the Empire that without, they can't really stay afloat. You have to remember that Kamino is completely outside of the main galaxy, so without providing a crucial service to the Empire, there's nothing to stop Palpatine and Tarkin from crushing the Kaminoans so that they can't pose a threat in the future. In order to test the Elite Squad's capability on the battlefield, they send them off on a mission to Onderon to track Saw Gerrera and the Partisans, but placed a clone trooper in the leadership role to oversee the mission, which was the enhanced sharpshooter Crosshair. Obviously, things didn't go too well after the enlisted members of the squad began to question the clone's place in the Imperial Army and resulted in Crosshair executing ES-01. Despite this, they did complete their mission thanks to the fear tactics of Crosshair, reporting back to Tarkin and Rampart with almost complete success. Now, it's pretty clear that Tarkin has managed to place the Tarkin Doctrine, which is a set of ideas, into Crosshair's head through his inhibitor chip, which forces him to lead and rule by fear. 
The Tarkin Doctrine basically outlined Tarkin's beliefs about how to rule the galaxy and stated that ruling by fear was the only way. He believed that overwhelming displays of force were far more important than the actual force itself. Now this leads us to the Death Trooper program. We obviously don't know what happens next for Crosshair and the Elite Squad because the Bad Batch series is still ongoing, but we can definitely go through some of the most likely theories and outcomes based on what we already know from the future when Rebels and Rogue One take place. So right away we know that Project War Mantle and pretty much every other project that was covert enough to be placed at the Scarif Vault was overseen by a body of the Imperial government known as the Tarkin Initiative. The Tarkin Initiative oversaw much of the Empire's advanced weapons research, including exotic new types of firearms, harnessing the energy of kyber crystals for weapons, and many other fringe weapons that weren't very widespread. The Tarkin Initiative also had lots of research ongoing on enhancing soldiers to form a stronger Imperial Stormtrooper Corps, which eventually even led to creating Hut Clone Troopers. Yep, Huts became Clone Troopers. But regardless, the Tarkin Initiative, which Rampart is clearly a member of, is in charge of Project War Mantle, known for enhancing soldiers and working on exotic new forms of weaponry. This is also the same group that the Death Troopers served and were likely born out of, making it pretty clear that War Mantle's final result will be the Imperial Death Trooper program. And even more interestingly, another project we know was at the Scarif Vault, Project Black Saber, also has connections to the Tarkin Initiative. Firstly because all projects there were overseen by them, but also because Moff Gideon uses Death Troopers. As you can probably see by now, this is all starting to connect. Now on top of this, we also know thanks to the new Clone Wars Encyclopedia, that Crosshair stands at a height of 6 foot 4, much taller than all of the regs. And thanks to the Rogue One reference books which came out around the time of the movie, we know that the height of most of the Death Troopers is around that 6 foot 4 mark, possibly pointing to at least the early versions of them being clones of Crosshair. We already saw in the last episode of The Bad Batch that the Kaminoans are attempting to clone one of the enhanced troopers to fight for them. They probably want Omega the most, but what if they have to settle for Crosshair and eventually his DNA sample gets into the hands of the Empire at the perfect time to begin the Death Trooper program? It's also looking very likely that we're heading 100 miles an hour into the Kamino Rebellion, where the clone troopers bred anti-troopers to fight back against the Empire. We've seen so many hints at the Kaminoans being angry at the Empire, with many lingering shots on Prime Minister Lama Su, so they may obtain Crosshair's DNA sample for the Death Trooper program during the Rebellion. In the Legends version of the event, almost all of Kamino's leadership is killed while trying to escape off-world, so their future is not looking too bright. In the Legends version of the Kamino Uprising, the bloody battle that ensued that day was the final straw for Palpatine, which convinced him to switch to Stormtroopers, which sounds an awful lot like what is going on in the Bad Batch right now. But officially, there was no Rebellion on Kamino. After that dark day, Palpatine simply believed that the clone troopers were far too susceptible to outside corruption to ever remain loyal to the Empire. Admiral Rampart is already shaping up to be a very interesting character, and I can't wait to see what the other projects get revealed to be. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one. But that was Project War Mantle from Rogue One Explained, and how it will likely progress into the future as more Star Wars The Bad Batch episodes release.